morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, 2023. It has been a true privilege to be part of a community that has spanned so much time, 966 mornings. Thank you, Penny. It's good to see you here. We say good morning to each other. That might be the greatest miracle of all, that we make the effort to see each other, to be seen, to share what's going on in life, and to learn a little bit of Torah consistently every day. The stability of this community is itself the gift, not just the content. Thank God for the hearts that have come together as part of this morning Torah community. So good morning to all of you. Let's see who's here. Ron, nice to see you, my friend. Lydia and Dale, Carl and Jerry, good morning. I hope you and yours are safe and well. Joyce, Cassandra, Sharon and Ashlyn, Linda and Arlene, good morning. Good to see you, Deborah, Amy and Anna. Hi, Diane, waving to you, my friend. Fabrice, sending love to the French Riviera. You know, we could all use a nice walk with you right now. Linda and Jerry, Lydia, Lydia, your daughter's medical visit was good. Thank God. Thank God. May she be blessed with continued health. May you be blessed with hope and health. Uh, let's see who else is here. Deborah, I saw what you posted. I'm going to be incorporating um, what I've now learned about into today's learning. I'm sending you such great comfort. Thank you for making sure that I saw too. Debbie, sending love to Colorado. And Deborah, good to see you. Stacy and Marsha. Ron, good morning. Hi, Julie. Okay. Uh, Lydia, happy birthday to you. All right, if I missed anyone, please understand that it's only because my screen moves too fast. Mahin, it's good to see you too. All right, let's take a breath. Learn a blessing. Learn a blessing. That's what kind of morning it's already been. Sing a blessing. Learn some Torah. Here we go. to frame our learning and also a little bit of self-reflection because here we are um, 966 broadcasts in to the creation of this global community almost four years on March 18th it will be four years of everyday learning literally every weekday for four years I've never been part of, of such a, a consistent community nor have I been so blessed to see my beautiful child Micah here Micah I love you Thanks for being here this morning to learn some Torah with me. So we have been steady and consistent together as a learning community. There are, you know, a thousand views per, uh, per broadcast typically. Um, and that's just an unfathomable amount. 
And the joy of this has been consistent even through hard times such as the one that we're in now. There is sadness too. Robin is sharing that a dear friend's nephew was killed in battle with six others in his unit yesterday. May their memories be blessed. The sacrifice is just too much for our hearts. But in this moment, when we are reading a Torah portion that speaks to both of these emotions, the possibilities of liberation where world, the world could get better, and where the situation is so dire that we just need a miracle for it to get better. This is a hard Parsha. It's a very, very hard Parsha. Because especially in the middle of it, in the middle of it, there is a hardening of hearts. And that is among the most challenging of things to witness. Because human beings are not created to have hearts that don't work. Our hearts are meant to work, to remain passionate and pulsing and loving and warm and sweet. Hearts are meant to be the place where God's love pours out in this world. Our hearts are meant to be that. The rabbis say that since, in Hebrew, Mishacharav Beit HaMikdash, from the time that the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, the Holy of Holies was relocated from a physical spot in Jerusalem to the human heart, which means God's love and our sacrifice all swirl in the human heart. And that's not only a Jewish claim. Every one of us created in God's image, and I mean every one of us, is meant to have a pulsing heart where God's love lives. In this week's Parsha, we see that a human being has the capacity to shut that down. And that is the worst tragedy of all. Because hell on earth ensues when someone closes off the godliness within them. The example in this Parsha happens over and over. It's among the hardest philosophical parts of the Torah to see that God strengthens, meaning closes down Pharaoh's heart. But that, while it happens in this Parsha, is the sixth time. Because five times in a row in this week's Parsha, first, Pharaoh shuts his own heart down. He relents and is going to let the Israelites go, and then doesn't. He will and he won't. He will and he won't. And we can simplify this and say there's a Yetzer Hatov, a good inclination on one shoulder and a Yetzer Hara, an evil inclination on the other. But that's not what this is. This goes beyond making simple bad decisions. This is about hurting someone because you stopped your heart from feeling human anymore. That happens in this week's Parsha, Parsha Vayera. It's important to note that God doesn't intervene until Pharaoh locks in the pattern of his hatred. Now, I use this as a framing, and I don't use it lightly, for a pattern that has continued to emerge and accelerate around the world, certainly in the United States, when it comes to the experience of Jews in society. You've heard the story, because I've shared it here, of a basketball team of a Jewish day school that encountered terrible hatred on the court last week, where a teenage student from another basketball team looked at a group of Jews and said, I love Hamas, you blank Jew. I won't quote it because why would I use a curse word when talking about my own pain? I won't dignify them with my emotionality. You also heard me talk about a protest that wasn't quite a protest. It wasn't nonviolent in the way that in the spirit of Dr. King, who we will celebrate this week, nonviolent protest can accomplish quite a lot, is very muscular in the public experience. But this march on Christmas Day in Manhattan put fear in people's hearts because masked people who were unwilling to show up as themselves, calling for a ceasefire, which is code word in this moment, for the death 
of countless Israeli hostages and ongoing attacks on Israelis by terrorists. A ceasefire is not the impact of what these people are calling for. Death is. That continued just yesterday and countless other places, including in El Cerrito, in the East Bay of California. I was blessed for 11 years to be the rabbi of a synagogue in Berkeley, right next to El Cerrito, right next to Albany, if you know the East Bay. It's a very, very, it's a little bit sprawling, but we're all connected. And just this morning, I saw the news posted by my dear friend who's here, Deborah. Deborah, whose heart is so magnificent, who sees the sky and makes sure to share it, who joins us every morning at 6 a.m. her time to learn Torah and to care, not only to care about Jews. She is a caring human being. Now, Deborah, I don't mean to praise you alone, but I want to say that when you are in pain, it is because the world is in pain because others are hurting. And your love similarly impacts many people around. That's what it is to be a mensch. We're taught so often in our tradition, in our Torah, in our rabbinic text, and certainly today, we are taught that to be human is to allow God to flow through our hearts into the world. I had a conversation with a class last night who just wanted to talk to me about why anti-Semitism, why? And I said to them, what I'll say to you now, there is no explanation for anti-Semitism other than people are willing to hurt and Jews traditionally have been victims when people are willing to hurt. We are often the canary in the coal mine, which means that when people demonstrate the capacity to hate Jews, they will also demonstrate the capacity to hate others, which is one of the reasons that Jews standing for civil rights and for LGBTQ rights and for reproductive rights, that is often not just righteous, but also pragmatic. Because when we stand together to combat hate, we are standing together to say no one, not me, not you, deserves to be targeted for being who we are. These feelings, these feelings are deep in our hearts. The commitment to do good and to be good allies and to be good friends, that's the best of Jewish values pouring through us. We don't, we don't always get it right, but we are called to get it right. Similarly, Sahal working in Gaza in, in human circumstances, battling terrorists, are doing something that has moral authority. And along the way, we cannot possibly imagine that mistakes are not happening but that does not in any way impugn the nobility of their work to save our people's lives, the hostages and Israel from being attacked by terrorists who have promised to do it again. Any call for a ceasefire is ignoring the facts on the ground. My heart is broken for Gaza, broken. But that's because my heart is working in Albany and El Cerrito, in the East Bay, on San Pablo Avenue, where I used to go to Trader Joe's. There was this past Shabbat, a march that said it was about a ceasefire. And there were a few Jews counter-protesting, holding their Israeli flag by the side. And one of the masked people, you don't fight for peace without showing your face. One of the masked people shoved a woman to the ground, grabbed her Israeli flag, and burned it in the street. You tell me if that sounds like peace. And that woman, who had been thrown to the ground, agreed to be interviewed, but not to be identified. That's how scared she was. And so the video of her interview, which I saw as a comment on Deborah's post, was of her hand in her chair. She looked like an older person, based on how her hand looked, shaking. 
And those are three examples that are close to me. I can only imagine, especially because UJA is so involved in combating anti-Semitism here in New York and around the world, we are a place of strength and values and love, not just for the Jewish community, but absolutely for the Jewish community. I think I, rem I recognize the voice of that person. Those are three examples close to me. The uptick in anti-Semitism is 400% right now in the United States. 400% since October 7th. How else can we understand that other than the description of Pharaoh's heart in this week's Parsha? That doesn't mean everyone. I don't want to sensationalize the problem. I don't want to sensationalize the problem. It's not everyone. Last night I was blessed to be a part in Westchester County of the swearing in of the new session, the new legislators taking their seats. And I spoke heart to heart, arm in arm, with an imam with whom I've traveled to Birmingham, Alabama, thanks to UJ's work, and uh, a pastor who works in this community we each spoke about being children of Abraham. There are things that hold us together, hold us warm, help our hearts function, build what Dr. King called a beloved community. And there are also facets of this world that I would, I would wish not to see. And perhaps I have been willfully ignorant. Perhaps not. But Pharaoh hardens his heart five times, committing again five times to continuing enslavement and degradation, to demonstrate dehumanization as his use of power. There are people in our world, there are people in our community who act like Pharaoh. And I have not chosen to see that. I, I wish that the Torah's language felt far away. But what you are all saying, friends, I see your comments and I feel your hearts, I really do, is that that is not the most powerful thing there is. Because after all, on that terrible day when the Jerusalem Beit HaMikdash, when the temple was destroyed, that wasn't the end of the Holy of Holies. That wasn't the end of our ability to access God. When we lost one way of relating, when we lost our center in 70 CE, we felt the relocation of that center right here, pulsing within us. You and I are, as Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel of blessed memory taught, images of God, a fraction of God's infinite power at our disposal. So in the face of hate, will you love even more? In the face of attacks on the Jewish community, will you activate your Jewish identity even more and not use it in a weaponized way to do the very thing that is being done to us? UJA is committed over and over to building this world. And we, you and I, must be committed to building it with love faster than anyone can tear it down with hate. We are not in this alone, though we are definitely in this. We have to hold ourselves to a high standard of ethical conduct and ethical feeling of open heart actions, of building community, of seeing the possibilities of love, even and especially in this movement. We have to wear our people's flag on our hearts, not because we think we are the only people worthy of love, but because we demand to be seen as people worthy of love by the world. You and I, friends, and not just you and I, but in this moment, I'm just giving our people extra love. I'm going to sing for hope. I'm going to amplify my beautiful wife's heart, too. You saw me post a few times yesterday 
the amazing words and music that she created. She's here today. I encourage you all to tap into every source of strength you possibly can today and to pay it forward, to offer it, and to help build what Neshama has called an invincible spirit. Our people is alive. Our hearts work. We will never, ever give in to this pain and feel like Pharaoh or act like that. When we are mistreated, when we are knocked down, we rise over and over and over again. When people ignore our pain, we make it louder in their ears until the world pays attention. You and I have so much to do, friends. So much to do. And I bless us with the strength to do it. I bless you with the strength to hold your heart steady in this unsteady time. Wear our people on your chest. Wear our hearts on your sleeve. And know if you feel disheartened. It's quite a word for today, right? If you feel disheartened, know that we are holding your heart too. When we say and sing and scream, Am Yisrael Chai, that is us holding our hearts. Today is a day for renewing Jewish hearts. Our world will be better for you and me doing the work it takes to be strong enough for our hearts to work properly. That's how God pours into this world. If we build this world from love, then God will build this world from love. So friends, let's do that. You and me, let's build this world from love. Take a second, center yourself. If I could ask you, maybe I'll just model it and you do what you'd like, but I'm putting my hands, both of them, on my beating heart. I'm sending strength to a woman in the East Bay of California who was knocked down for loving her people. I'm holding my heart and sending strength to a basketball team in New York who felt scared and attacked. I'm holding my heart and sending strength and love to anyone who's feeling scared just because of who they are and how people speak about them and act toward them. I'm holding my heart. Maybe you're holding yours. Maybe we're just holding each other's. Our hearts are working, thank God. Let's make sure they keep working so that we can fulfill what the rabbis taught us 2,000 years ago. Bimakom she'ein anashim ish liot ish. When people aren't acting like human beings, be a human being. Let's sing together. Kolon baleva penima nefesh Yehudi homia ulefate mizrach kadima ayin lezion zofia. On lo avda tikvatenu, al tikva bat shnot alpaim, liot am chovshi peyartenu, eretz zion yerushalayim. Liot am chovshi be'artzenu Eretz Zion Virushalayim Am Yisrael Chai, bring them home now. See you tomorrow.